Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, February 20th instance of the Gateway API Gamma meeting. Uh, as a reminder, this meeting is governed by the Kubernetes Code of Conduct, so please be kind to everybody. We do have an open agenda. Uh, feel free to add any agenda items to the uh, to the doc, and I put a link to the agenda doc here in the chat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that we can look at said uh, agenda together. Do, do, do. Let me find the right window. Here we go. I found the right one. There we are. All right, can everybody see my screen? Nice. Okay. So a uh, couple of topics here. Uh, I hoping someone from uh, like Rob or someone would, would attend, um, but we can still at least discuss it. <clears throat> um, it seems uh, that uh, we are, that, that the gamma part of the Gateway API spec has been an experimental for kind of our, our soaking period. Uh, it's been over six months since it released. Uh, Gateway API is an uh, app, you know, 1.0 in GA. And so I think it maybe makes sense to start talking about what it, uh, you know, whether or not we're ready to move out of experimental. Um, or, or rather, move the move to move the get forward. Regardless, um, I, I know that there's been some confusion from people. Um, at least I've talked to internally about the status of the service binding in uh, the routing resources. Uh, and so, during the next release, I think it might be appropriate to talk to SIGNET uh, reviewers. I think that'd be the time where we uh, kind of get their final call over the service binding. Um. And if they're good with that, and if we can get consensus on this beforehand, uh, then I think that it's pretty clear we've got conformance tests written uh, for service binding, and even it's being addressed in lots of gaps that are being written now. Um, the gamma piece is being considered, so I think it makes a lot of sense to, to talk about progressing it forward. Anybody have any thoughts or opposition uh, to that idea? Well, I would have a few, but uh, I'll let other people go first. I think it might be you, Carson. Go ahead. <laughs> I think you're doing it. So uh, I'm sorry, John is not here, but uh, I, I discussed with him a few times. Um, my my primary concern uh, comes around the cluster local semantics. That's that's has been my uh for quite a while um the problem with, with with meshes including istio is that it's very complicated i mean with istio is redefining cluster local to mean global we have the you know dns which is particularly tricky to implement with cluster local because you know vms don't see it and um no, dot cluster the local in particular. That's that's really what uh, what I'm concerned about. Uh, the fact that in order to use a service attachment, a client will have to use a name that is basically you know, service dot namespace dot svc dot cluster dot local, and DNS doesn't resolve it outside of that cluster, and other clusters using a service that is not defined will have troubles because the name you know will need to do hacks with DNS like Istio is doing. And uh, we are messing up the semantics of Kubernetes, which means in general that cluster local stays in that cluster, which is, has all kinds of other implications. Uh, if it wasn't for that, I mean, it's it's not, you know, again, just not a big deal, but um, I would like to see at least some 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 um, position on what's what exactly is a user supposed to do when, when they're using the fully qualified domain name of the service outside of, of the cluster. So I guess like my immediate reaction to that is I'm wondering if that's less a problem with our proposed implementation of like a like binding to service and the way in which that's being adopted and more of a 
problem intrinsic to service itself? It is intrinsic to service. I mean, definitely it is intrinsic to service and intrinsic to, you know, how the service has been, you know, massacred by, by meshes, by defining, redefining the semantics and, and the name itself has been kind of made completely relevant. Nobody knows anymore what's, what's supposed to happen on use cluster local. Because again, if you are using sidecar, something happens. If you are using waypoints, probably something else will happen. If you use pure Kubernetes, something will happen. And two of them will probably be broken, at least for some applications. And again, it's very difficult to figure out even which applications will be broken if you use clustered local. Um, again, as a user, I mean, I would like to know exactly what, what is the semantic, what, what does it mean? Outside of the single Kubernetes cluster use case. Well, oh, custom. I, I mean, hasn't Kubernetes just murdered this itself, regardless of the mesh? Uh, not necessarily Kubernetes with with uh, with cluster set. Kind of un un un. I mean, they define it. They define everything to be within clients and servers. Everything inside the cluster. They are self consistent. Yeah, so but probably... they, I mean, but they but they punted the DNS implementation right completely. Uh, right, they... so they said. Like you can share the same DNS across two clusters. Uh, that's interesting because with JKE, at least, and a few others with external DNS uh, and, and other implementations, they have a mechanism to actually map DNS, uh, you know, names to a real DNS. So either cloud DNS or any other DNS. They support about external DNS supports a dozen or, or 20 or so uh, DNS servers. So the problem is actually solved now for DNS, easy synchronization into a globally VPC visible uh, DNS server, but not cluster local because cluster local again, at least in JK is implemented with some sophisticated rules that are you know, using source address and other mapping to, to make sure that it's, uh, it's constrained. Um, I have a talk by the way on that, uh, uh, still there about Istio and DNS, and, and that's one of the main topics about you know the options that exist for uh, around using proper names basically for for uh, DNS. So the way I like to think about Kubernetes DNS is that it is too good at being bad. Um, and by that I mean it, it it it's just useful enough for eighty percent of people. Um, maybe even 90% of people and it falls apart. The assumptions that it's built upon fall apart horribly when you get out of that 80%, 90% use case. And so as a result, we're, we're really in the sort of situation where the Herculean amount of effort, the enormous amount of effort it would take to rebuild DNS and Kubernetes um, to make it more robust is something that nobody really wants to do end to end, to be honest. And so as a result, I think we've seen a lot of people punt. But, but to your point, Kostin, we've, we, there's been a lot of punting of the DNS question, cluster local semantics, things like that. And so I think that really what we're doing, a lot of what we're doing in Istio with Ambient really actually is the, is the key here. So one of the, one of the uh, distinctions I want to, or clarifications I want to make about the service binding is that we're not saying the, the, the gateway API is not taking the position that service finding is the only thing you can do. Um, by contrast, we actually want to create more mechanisms. But if you think about it the other way, like can you can you build a mesh implementation today that does not do some form of service finding? Um, it, it's going, if it's not on you know, a different mode like Istio, it's going to have very, it's going to struggle to be adopted widely. Um, there's so many things using service and, and semantically bound service today that it is really kind of almost, in my opinion, necessary to bind to service, uh, route to service to some extent. So I think what we're doing to, by moving service binding to, to, to the next step, what we're doing is not drawing a line in the sand and saying this is how you have to do it forever. It's basically a way for us to to mark where meshes are today and be able to take that next step forward and build the next generation of binding so that X number of years from now, the users who have made that shift, who, ha who, who can take advantage of that new functionality can do so. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's kind of where my head is. Yeah, no, no, I completely agree with you. And, and I'm not saying that we should not have binding to service. I'm saying that if we promote this to V1, we should have a clear semantic of, you know, the 80% that you described, 
really means that you are inside the Kubernetes cluster clients and servers, single local cluster, everything is fine. The problem is when we, we, we go beyond the cluster, then it's a problem because again, there is a cluster set, there is, there is DNS and other stuff, but within the 80% of people who use single cluster, it's not a problem. And for, you are saying that DNS is not solved. That's not entirely true. I mean, if you look at JK today, it has, you know, automatically creates entries in, in, in cloud DNS. And I'm sure other vendors have similar solutions and they are becoming very, very easy with external DNS. So it's really no, it's a trivial effort to create proper DNS. Uh, I agree, nobody wants to change uh, Kubernetes DNS because, you know, it solves 90% of the problem. It's good enough for single cluster, but, you know, the integration with proper DNS where we don't have to do anything. We have DNS six sign names and, you know, absolutely 100% standard DNS with no Kubernetes specific behaviors. So that's already a reality. And I think John also had, you know, the demo, so you use custom domain names in, uh... so uh, again, I'm not trying to kill the service attachment. I'm just saying that we need to narrow the scope and not put ourselves into a kind of, uh, lock ourselves into another East US semantic where cluster local becomes global and, or not, I don't know. You remember the discussion we had in, uh, in open source. And also, what do we do for custom domain names? So if you have mesh names that are not, you know, prod.google.com, how do you represent them with service attachment? I don't think it's possible today, unless you start using external name and other hacks on top of that. Yeah, anyway, completely agree. Because... Com com yeah, I completely agree with those limitations. I think that I think what I'm what I'm hearing is that there, what I'm hearing is that there's consensus around uh, moving service finding forward with. Tight, while tightening the language and, and narrowing yes. the scope to um, the, the the basic use case, like like uh, Mike mentioned that Rob's got a a, a uh, doc a get for um, that he has been submitted actually uh, and merged for MCS API like MCS considerations with with Gateway API. Um, but yeah, I think that that's pretty reasonable to make sure that we add a paragraph or so uh, of language to to say that hey, this is for the like in cluster use case for, for uh, Gateway API, um, we have no guarantees around VMs or non kubernetes environments where things where DNS might be, um, you know, more volatile or or just different than our assumptions. So yes. I, I, I think that's that makes sense. Uh, we can move forward with that. All right. Any other questions or comments folks want to capture? All right, moving on to the next uh, agenda item then. Um, I think, you know, based on even seeing attendance here at this meeting and the changing time slots for Gateway API, uh, the, the main Gateway API meeting, I think it's kind of past time to, to merge these two meetings. When the Gamma meeting first started out, uh, when Gamma first kicked off, um, it was a, an effort of, you know, a few mesh aware uh, people invested in, in, on the mesh side trying to, to build something very specific. And I think that uh, we've very much done that, you know, talking about moving uh, service binding forward. Uh, I think it's, I think the, the mesh aspects of the API are well understood by a very much wider community. Um, at some, at one point we had, you know, 20 plus people attending Gamma somewhat regu regularly. There's a lot to do here, uh, but as, as much as we've, be moving forward and people are working on things here, it's really continuing to intersect with the main Gateway API meeting. Um, and so I think it makes a lot of sense now, especially that the main Gateway API meeting is doing switching time zones to accommodate, you know, people who live in, uh, sorry, different time slots to accommodate people who live in different time zones. I think it's all the more sense to kind of move forward with, with merging these two uh, so we can have quorum, uh, quorum as, as frequently as possible. Um, so just wanted to kind of put that idea out there for folks. Um, if there's anybody who feels like they probably need a, a separate meeting or that things are going to, or worried things are going to get addressed, uh, please feel free to uh, make that known. That's kind of the purpose of this. Um, otherwise, I, I think that's something maybe we can bring up in the, in the next Gateway API meeting to discuss uh, kind of merging the two meetings. Louis, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the only like I'm I'm generally supportive of that, and obviously there's a bunch of gaps going on in the main gateway thing that are 
very clearly related to gamma and mesh related things. The only one that I would wonder a bit about is workload attached policies. And whether yeah. right, discussing that is going to just derail the gateway meeting. Right, gamma defined an idiom for attaching policies to services. Meshes deal with traffic to both services and workloads. You can extend the gamma idiom, just assume that it applies to pods as well as to services, at least for some class of policy. And leave it at that, right? And just make that a part of the, the foundational statement of gamma and say that that covers mesh use cases, right? For stateful stats and other things like that. Um, and then we just get on with our lives and say, look, it's just be clear, right? When we describe the semantics of policy attachment within the confines of gamma, right? That we have established that as a precedent. So people don't feel like it's inventing something. Um, obviously there are some policies that can apply to that use case and some policies that can't, right? But it's, it's not hard to come up with examples. I know Kostin is going to tell me that I, nobody should be addressing workloads and we should all be sharding traffic through services with uh, no. cookies and, no, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. Okay, exactly. uh, no, uh, actually, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I kind of changed my mind a bit about this uh, this subject. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, um, but my, 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 my um, you know, maybe some middle, some middle ground. I mean, in, in, it, it's not controversial to have policies attached to backends. And workloads are really backends in this case, they're not frontends. Yes. Because now, if we had some CRD called, let's say, backend or workload group or whatever you want to call it, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a replacement of work, work, workload group in Istio, for example. Call it however you want, workload pool what, with a selector, with a select pods. It's pretty much equivalent to what Istio does today with policies attached to, 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 to pods, because you attach to either you have a policy with label selector or have a policy with parent ref workload group and that has a selector semantically it's the same thing it is a bit extra one extra step but you you get uh, consistency yeah i mean i mean obviously there's a bunch of existing stuff that acts like workload group right a conceptual workload group endpoint slice is one right it's yep. the infrastructural not usually human authored deployment is another right fairly obvious one Right. Deployment it's... is very reasonable. I'm attaching policies to deployment. I mean, basically, if we extend when gateway API uh, target ref to be, again, it's a service right now. It can be a service import. Maybe you have a backend to represent, uh, I don't know, uh, console or whatever else. I mean, and there are different other. Deployment is a valid one. Uh, workload group in history is a different valid one, but at least the, the, the API model is exactly the same always where you have policy attached to backend router. You know, we don't change the semantics yeah. too much. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's all that we would need to say. Like it's, I don't think we have to define what the backend group type is. We just have to say what the idiom is. Yeah. Uh, Mike? But not 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 pol not direct workloads. So basically policy with like we have an Istio, but with a level of indirection so we make everyone happy and avoid the debates. Without trying to solve the actual question of what the implementation looks like, I think my immediate answer is no, it would not be too big a distraction. I actually think that it could benefit um, from hearing other implementations, perhaps like some ingress implementations doing pass through to like a JWT token and wanting to authorize that to the back end. Um, I, I think we just haven't touched on a lot of those like off and off Z things in Gateway API uh, North South yet, but that actually it would help clarify some of the semantics uh, and UX around this, having that discussion uh, in that bigger space. Yeah, I was gonna say plus plus one to that. I think to the original question, I, I think that that sort of discussion would be welcomed in the main API meeting, um, especially with reviewer bandwidth, um, or, or rather with with there being an explicit goal of optimizing reviewer bandwidth. I think that there is going to be um, a lot of, of room for discussions like these um, to make sure things are um, are proved out, not proved out, but are are discussed well, and that the use cases are considered. Um, 
appropriately before moving forward with them. So I think that the students who are discussions will be welcomed. And on top of that, like that re the review of bandwidth is going to end up affecting us anyway, because getting any new gap or thing in a gateway API is going to be dependent upon getting something out. So it's made, it's, it, it makes more sense to do that in a place where we've got visibility, the most visibility we can onto it, in my opinion. I into the into the details. So I do think it might end up being a little bit more complicated um, than just the, than keeping the same idiom and semantics. Because, uh, for example, it becomes more difficult to say, "I want this policy to apply to the front end, but this type represents a back end, and therefore I need to um, evaluate this policy uh, before load balancing versus after load balancing." And it's difficult, from my understanding, that's difficult to do with the current idiom uh, of just a parent ref. But um, I haven't thought about it super long. And so I do think that's something we need to, we need to talk about and target, uh, especially when you start getting into things like off-D policy. Um, there is a, I saw a PR today to start to, to make a mention of network policy in Gateway API. And there's probably some overlap there. But um, all that to say, I, I do think that this, that would be a very welcome topic in the main gateway API meeting. All right. Uh, does anybody else have any other topics to discuss? Um, do, what's the status of merge right now? Uh, Waiting for someone to say approve. <laughs> uh, I think that most of the like most of the comments that I've seen are, are fairly resolved. There are a couple of open discussion items, Louis. I think you're in one of those. Um, yeah. I think I'm in I, two. I feel I feel like both of mine are not resolved. Okay, I'm being a pain. Well, I'm going to be a pain in the ass about it. But <laughs> okay, cool. I I, I honestly. Uh, there are, are 100 ones, uh, 100 uh, conversations, and I have not been following all of them. Uh, 100 conversation like comments, uh, and I will admit that I my eyes start glazing over on uh, some of them. But I will uh, take a look at those and feel free to bump your uh, your uh, threads, Louis, um, to make sure they get resolved before before merging. I think that the general understanding is is that it's close um, once those last couple, especially once those last couple get resolved. Uh, let me grab that link for you, Mike. Is this the merging thing? I just missed the beginning of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We're we're, we're off agenda now, but it's it's the three people who are going to comment on the damn PR anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> I I think we're mostly just missing the thumbs up from Nick or Rob of like it's okay to omit this field if we put sufficient guardrails in place was the one comment thread. I, I think all of us would like to remove it if we can. Um, yeah. So yeah I mean, it, just has, your guidance. it just has this kind of downstream impact on how people think about the rest of the specification, right? Yeah. That, um, it's important to get that recognized because otherwise we're going to make inconsistent decisions elsewhere. Yeah. Um, which is not yeah. good. Um, Yeah, and that's the main part. Uh, and that's that, that whole life cycle thing, right? I, I, my opinion is the whole templating recommendation should be left as an exercise to the controller as a should and not a must, um, and explain the pros and cons of doing either option. Because like, like, templating is so fraught, right, as a concept. Um, that it's better off re not making any recommendation around it because there are so many other templating systems that exist. Kubernetes itself should not try to have a templating mechanism defined in its APIs. It should kick requirements over to controllers. The templating thing, I don't think that we're going to resolve it in this thread just because it is a like, Big thorny yeah. problem that we've kind of just like papered over the surface of for two years. Right. I mean, I mean, that's the that's the point, right? Like, is yeah, is, you can't solve it. 
right in the spec you just i don't think you can and so even even having your like a recommendation around it is thorny right because you're going to give users unreasonable expectations and implementers will not, not know what to do into, we should probably spin that out into a separate issue because it feels yeah, yeah that's fine very much worth addressing in its own context yeah that that's actually that that would that would be great actually like cool Sounds good. All right, lovely. Well, appreciate everybody attending. Um, and we will maybe have the next meeting, or maybe maybe not, depending on how the discussion with uh, upstream gateway gateway leads goes about merging this meeting. So, be on the lookout for calendar changes and updates in the Gateway API Slack channel. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, take care. Have a happy Tuesday. Take care, y'all. See you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.